Before the dawn of international modernism, the vast majority of the planet was populated by cities and buildings that had evolved over time uh, by adapting empirically to the locally available materials, the locally available techniques, uh, to optimize the human living conditions within the given local climate. For instance, in southern Europe and the Mediterranean, uh, the white villages evolved with the flat roofs, sort of uh, minimizing uh, heat accumulation and allowing people to escape to, to the cool roof uh, at night. Uh, and in the northern areas, the pitched roofs and the large overhangs evolved to protect people from, from snowfall and, uh, and rain. Uh, Bernard Rudowski referred to this kind of architecture as uh, vernacular architecture or architecture without architects. Uh, but then came the modern architect uh, and the building engineer and replaced uh, the sort of empirical tradition with, um, with analysis and technology. And essentially what the building engineer did was to sort of analyze which qualities uh, a building needs to provide and for each quality he would design a specific machine. Basically, we need to be able to see inside. So he designed electric lights, making us independent of the windows. We need uh, fresh air, so he designed uh, mechanical ventilation, making us independent of opening the windows. And we need uh, comfortable temperature, so he designed central heating and air conditioning, uh, making us independent of, uh, of, uh, of, of solar heat or the thickness of the wall or, or even shade. So uh, gradually, modern architecture evolved into this sort of uh, monolith uh, void of any kind of quality, tube fed by an army of machines. Um, and gradually the, the world got populated by these sort of boring boxes with big energy bills. So um, when we were recently asked to, um, to design a, a high rise, 50% housing, 50% office, we asked ourselves if we could actually reverse this tendency and use contemporary intelligence to move the qualities back into the architecture and away from the, the machine room in the basement. So we ask ourselves, first of all, um, offices, they, they spend energy on cooling and they spend energy on electric lights. So how can you minimize uh, the need for cooling while maximizing the abundance of, uh, of daylight? Well, first of all, in uh, in Denmark, basically, the sun rises in, uh, in the east, goes over the south and down in the west. Uh, and um, so the smartest way of, uh, of orienting the building would be to have a north-facing facade completely free of sunshine, but with uh, abundant uh, diffuse daylight. Um, and a south facade that is actually going to be exposed most of the day to the sun, but from the highest angle where it's easiest to get rid of it. Um, so we ask ourselves, since it's only in the summer months that uh, there's a risk of overheating in, uh, in a Danish uh, workplace. So, uh, and the maximum angle of the sun is 57 degrees. So if we would basically tilt the building uh, to the 57 degrees, we would sort of eliminate all direct sun on the, on the south side, while still uh, maximizing the, the daylight exposure on the north. As a matter of fact, you get three times as much light from a skylight as from a vertical window. So we would basically increase the amount of daylight by and, and at the same time eliminating uh, the exposure to direct sun. Housing, on the other hand, spends energy on heating. They want as much sun as possible for, uh, for passive solar heat gain. Um, and they also want to have nice terraces uh, with sun and, uh, and sun in the living room. So basically they want to tilt the other way, maximizing the exposure to the sun. So how can we combine these sort of two uh, opposing logics in a single building? Um, and also none of them actually work with the traditional vertical elevator core. Um, so sort of trying to battle this sort of a dilemma between housing and office, we came up with the idea of actually stacking offices and housing on top of each other into this sort of a zigzag silhouette and the sort of the, the traditional sort of modernistic slab gradually turned into this sort of um, zigzag uh, silhouette of, of office and housing. And if we try to look at how the sun uh, reaches the building, you can see that um, uh, all of the offices are completely dark, all of the housing are completely bright. So you get this sort of conceptual zebra of shade and sun 
shade and sun, uh, um, sort of defining not only the the zigzag silhouette from one side, but also the uh, the, the frontal elevation of uh, of lightness and and darkness. So um, so essentially, you can say by deploying a, an analysis as rigorous as the sort of functionalistic analysis that created the the sort of um, the, the, the pure monolith of, of Arne Jacobsen. Um, we sort of uh, created uh, this sort of uh, zigzag modernism where the, the qualities of the spaces and the, and the indoor climate doesn't come from the machine room, but from the, from the qualities um, integrated into the architecture. Um, contemporary intelligence and calculation and, and simulation is used not to sort of in increase the, the amount of machines, but actually to uh, eliminate them. Uh, rather than architecture without architects, it's sort of engineering without engines or functionalism 2.0.